Hey everyone! In this lesson we're going to take a look at how to write simple methods for the classes that we're designing. And when I say simple, what I'm talking about are methods that don't have any parameters and don't return any values. So we're going to review our understanding of the purpose of class methods and then we're going to talk about some strategies for figuring out which methods you should be using for a particular class. And then lastly we'll actually get into the nitty-gritty details of the syntax of writing class methods. So just to review, remember that uh, every object consists of two parts. It consists of the data that defines its properties and defines its uniqueness. And then the methods that uh, are the behavior that that object can perform. And every object of the same class has the same set of methods. We also remember we've talked about all of the class methods that we design should fall into one of two categories. They're either a mutator method if they change the value of any class variables in some way, or they're an accessor method if they don't. So as far as figuring out which methods you should include when you're designing a class, um, again, it's all going to depend on the scenario that you're trying to capture in your program. Um, even the same class name can look very different uh, in different programs depending on what parts of the class you're trying to simulate. But in general, when you're designing a class, try to design the class so that objects of that class can be useful in a lot of different situations, not just the one very narrow usage that you're envisioning in the program that you're writing. You want to try to figure out all of the different possible kinds of things that someone might want to do with that object of that class, and then write a method for each one of those actions. A lot of times it can be helpful to think of methods as being like verbs. If we think about class variables as being the adjectives of an object, then the methods are the verbs. And you can take a look at the description of your problem and look for all of the different verbs that you see associated with a particular object. And the last tip, which can sometimes be helpful, is just take a look at your variables. A lot of times your variables will suggest to you what those methods should be. And in particular, remember that since your variables are private, nobody outside of this object is going to be able to figure out what their values are unless you include accessor methods to access those variables. So at the very least, you might want to include an accessor method for each one of your class variables that people might need to get the value of at some point. So here's an example. Suppose we're just going to create a bank account class. Um, you can see a couple of examples. This isn't an exhaustive list by any means, but you can notice that on the left we have a set of three mutator methods that are going to change our bank account object. And on the right you see a set of three accessor methods to tell us information about the bank account. Notice that a lot of times accessor methods begin with the word get. That's not a requirement, but it is oftentimes a um, rule of thumb that we use when we're naming our class methods. Okay, let's get into the syntax. You can see the basic skeleton of a class method here. And in italics, you can see the parts of that skeleton which are variable that you can change for each particular method. So every method starts with the word public. Well, almost every method, but all the methods that you're going to be worried about right now. Starts with the word public, followed by a return type, followed by the name of the method, and then in parentheses, however many parameters a, a particular method might have. So let's talk a little bit more about what each one of those parts of the definition means. Under return type, the Return type should be the type of value that the method returns. So if the method returns an integer, then you should put int. If it returns a string, you should ret uh, put string. If it returns an object of another class, then you should put that. Um, it's really important that you choose the correct type because inside the method, you need to return the correct value. And if you're writing a method, like all the methods that we're going to be using in this lesson and in this lab that don't return anything, then what you have to put after the word public is the keyword void. Void, like it sounds, means nothing. In this case, it means no return value. So that's what you should put after the word public. As far as method names go, 
The rules for method names are exactly the same as the rules for variable names as far as having it be all one word, having it only contain letters and numbers in the underscore, having it not be able to start with a number, and making sure that your method doesn't match a keyword that's already part of Java. So you can't create a method called return. Um, but other than that, really anything goes and you should try to think about good method names just like you spend time thinking about good variable names. Okay, let's see an example of that. So let's just suppose that we have my student class that I was working with in our lesson on writing constructors. Um, just for now I'm going to rename the method and I'm going to ah, I'll go to the variable where I find this and then I'm going to save this with its new name. Okay, so I'm going to add a method to this class. Let's just suppose I'm feeling very generous as a teacher. I'm going to add a method to my class that sets the value of the my average variable to 100. Because maybe the new student starts off with their average equal to 100. So the first thing I'm going to do is write a comment describing what the method does. Every method needs to have a at least one uh, a one-line comment explaining its purpose. Now, uh, start with the word public. The return type, again, this method has no return value, so we're just going to choose void. And then we have to pick a good name. So why don't we call this reset average? Now, inside the set of parentheses, we would put all the parameters that this method needs, but this method doesn't need any parameters, so we're going to leave it blank for now. Um, we'll talk about how to put parameters in our methods in a later lesson set of curly braces. Notice that when I'm programming I always create parentheses in pairs and I always create curly braces in pairs and that way I never get the syntax error that I'm missing a curly brace or I'm missing a parentheses. I always make a set of curly braces and then I go back inside and add what I need to. In this case inside of our class method we can do pretty much anything that we're used to doing inside of our main method plus if we need to we can modify class variables. And so in this case, we're going to take my average and we're going to set it equal to 100. Okay, let's compile that just to make sure that it works. Hey, how about that? Oh, because I changed the name of my class, I have to rename my constructors. Okay, so my method compiled. If I want to see how it works, let's go down here. So we're going to tell Marcy to reset her average, and then we're going to print her again. Okay, go ahead and compile that. Reset average. Really? Did I call it something else? Yes. Oh, huh. sorry, I have to also change the name of my objects because they are now student method objects. Okay, let's try again. Now we run our program and we see that the first time when we constructed the object, average was equal to zero. When we called our method, we ended up with average equal to 100 and you also got to see a fun and exciting episode of Mr. Worcester makes simple mistakes. Just so you know, Mr. Worcester makes lots of mistakes when he programs too. Okay, so in this lesson we talked about the purpose of methods, we talked about some ideas for finding the methods that you need to include in your class, and then we talked about the basic syntax for writing methods that have no return values and no parameters. Alright, thanks.